In the spirit of Halloween, let's go over a few creeper pressures you can add to your defensive game. Specifically from four down nickel fronts, here we'll go over three different blitzes from nickel 245 that are all a little bit different from each other but generally have the same philosophy which is sending good pressure at the quarterback without sacrificing anybody in coverage. Uh, as a creeper, you're sending an unexpected rusher, like a linebacker or a nickel or a corner even, uh, and dropping an edge defender into coverage. So whether they're on their own or maybe user that, that dropping defender in coverage yourself, that's up to you. Uh, I've gone over these in my Baltimore Ravens defensive ebook, which you can find by joining the YouTube membership. Uh, there are also a number of other videos on that ebook, as well as a New York Giants offensive ebook that every week we, we update with something new. But here I'm going to be talking about the the trade-offs with, or the, sorry, the trade-offs between a pressure, contain, and coverage that you can easily switch between uh, and fit, you know, to the needs of any situation that you're in in any game. Uh, so what we'll do here is we'll start with the Mike Blitz Creeper against three by one sets. So this is pretty universal. Uh, it works in obviously nickel 245, like what we're gonna be going over here. Uh, I believe it works in nickel normal. Uh, I'm pretty sure it works in the 335 three, three, uh, will and 335 three, Sam sets. And then I think it also works in 236, dime 236 as well. Uh, maybe even in 4.3 or something like that. Uh, all it is is simply uh, you're picking a play. It doesn't work in every coverage, but cover six, this is a great play to run against trips anyway. Um, it works well, I think also cover two works, probably quarters it works. Uh, all you really have to do is just blitz uh, your mic. So it's this guy over here, that this kind of interior linebacker that's closer to the trip side. Uh, and then you don't, get, you don't need to get it to work, but you know contain is nice because if they try to escape from that pressure, uh, they're gonna be running into contains essentially. And because you're sending five, um, you know, you're gonna get essentially single teams all the way across the board. So those contains should be able to actually work. Uh, now, that's not really the point of this video, but just to kind of prep you up and, and warm up to this, we'll just show you how this five man blitz works. We'll go ahead and run that. And you see he comes through this B gap right here, uh, clean at that quarterback. Now, again, the whole point of this video is that we are turning this into a creeper. So rather than running it like this, we are dropping the backside guy. So he's not needed to make this work essentially. So we, he's essentially free to us. So we can either uh, use this guy right here and let this guy drop into the vertical hook, uh, or you know you can change him to anything. But in this case, we want to keep some sort of integrity to the cover six. Or if we want to really mess things up, we could use this guy ourselves, and then you know we can replace as the three receiver hook and leave this guy on the vertical hook. But you know you could even switch between that essentially. So now again, you know, I'll contain, so we still at least get contained to that side, and then I'll go ahead and drop in coverage, and then you'll see that the pressure is still able to come through. So obviously that's really nice for us to be able to get good pressure, um, but also by only sending four. So we're still uh, good in coverage. Now we are a little bit worse in coverage because now rather than having good, uh, you know, essentially safeties here, like likely if you're playing ultimate team or something like that, you have good safeties here rather than linebackers and especially not, you know, a defensive end right here. So you're losing a little bit in terms of who's in coverage. So um, that's a bit of a downside, but I believe your pressure is gonna be coming in more consistently and better. Uh, and by the way, this is something they can't slide to protect. Uh, they, even if they slide to the right and you know re-ID the mic, uh, it, it won't pick this up. Um, but otherwise, you know, we're sound in coverage because we have all the pieces needed for cover six. Uh, now, you do have the other trade-off with if this guy's in coverage now, and then the mic is blitzing, and then I'm the new kind of interior guy here is the three receiver hook. Well, now we don't have a contain to the opposite side. So in this case, you know, if they have somebody that's a little bit faster than Goff, if they see that pressure coming in, uh, they can escape out here and then try to make a play over here. So obviously that's one trade off that we'll have to deal with. So if they're, you know, with more of a pocket passing quarterback, like a Marino or something like that, then feel free to use this. Uh, or if they're using somebody more uh, like a scrambling quarterback, like a Michael Vick or something, maybe you want to just send five right here because you know they're they're not going to be able to get gunslinger and things like that. So they're likely not as good at passing the ball. So maybe you don't need all seven of your zones or all seven of your 
uh, coverage guys and then you can send five so you get that pressure plus you get good contain over there so you know depending on which type of quarterback you're coming up against you can either send five or four uh, or also it can be a matter of um, you know if we're sprinkling this, sprinkling this in third down or fourth down um, then maybe they don't necessarily expect this and then before they even you know when they're looking downfield and before they even decide or, or realize they can scramble that mic is coming through cleanly so that's really really nice uh there's the other trade-off also uh if they are blocking the running back the running back does a good job of picking this up so the mic comes in clean but obviously that the running back the running back is able to take them out of the play however just like the running back is able to take the blitz out of the play I think in a sense the the blitz is taking the running back out of the play so if the running back goes into the route you know we can key on him as our user we can be a little bit closer to him so he don't get that quick throw but you know the running back is almost the best pass catcher in this year's game you know some of those in routes and those table routes and some of those funky wheel routes that you see i think maybe i have it on this play no um, but some of them are really really hard to defend and in this case if you are coming through consistently with your pressure then they have kind of no choice but to block that running back and then you're taking away pretty much their best passing threat uh, and then from there you know you can just kind of uh, wait for these guys to make a shed because now they have to try to find actual receivers and coverage uh, and then i think in some cases you're a little bit better there so that's another thing that you can consider also back to the point of contain um this particular version right here we can make things a little bit better here so what we can do is we can spread our defensive line so left on the d-pad and up and you'll notice that nothing changes to the strength to the blitz side but this defensive end comes now back to this kind of four eye or three tech type of position so now we can actually get contains on both sides and so although he can possibly get double teamed on that side I think it does obviously a much better job than not. So it might be maybe a little bit obvious that you're spreading this guy. Maybe it's a little bit obvious now that you're blitzing, uh, but you know you have that pressure. And then now if they try to scramble, uh, then you'll at least have somebody there to, to try to make a play on that scrambling quarterback. And just to say it again, this particular blitz really only works against trip sets where the tight end is attached to the line of scrimmage. So if he split out a little bit more wide, like a you know a tray set or a trips tight end or something like that, uh, then this path right here from the mic will be a little bit different and it won't work quite as well. So it has to be something like this. Um, if it's not, uh, then we got a couple of other answers uh, waiting for you here. But yeah, just like in this case, you'll see he comes right through here. This time is a little bit too wide, but still uh, the guard wasn't able to pick him up. Okay, now we can work to the Buck Slant 3 Blitz, uh, which looks just like this. And where this works is exactly where the other one doesn't work. Okay, so this only works when there isn't a tight end, uh, again, attached to the line of scrimmage, to the side of the Blitz. Okay, so right away, you know, if, if they're coming up with Bunch, you run the other one. If they're coming up again, if you're coming up against something like Trips Tight End, uh, you would run something like this. Now, um, and that's really it and just i should note also uh, if it isn't already obvious you really need auto flip to make any of this stuff work okay so uh right away you know just running this blitz like this uh, can sometimes come in so maybe if i contain you know we get two guys off the edge and actually this time it worked quite well with both of those guys coming free but how i prefer to run it is that i'll take this blitzing nickel and you know usually he's really pretty far away anyway uh, and then I'll take him out of the blitz. So in a lot, in most cases, I'll put him in a vert vertical hook. Uh, maybe you want to man him up on that slot guy, or maybe you want to do some stacking of your flats. Uh, obviously, that's up to you. But it's kind of important that we actually take him out of the blitz. From there, you know, we can use whoever we want. Likely, it'll probably be the three receiver hook right here. Uh, we have our edge guy away from the blitz dropping just like the other blitz and then in this one we will also contain so the contains important here because obviously we want this guy to be able to do something uh, if the quarterback escapes essentially uh, and then it's also important because this guy uh, the mike linebacker here uh, will take this really exaggerated loop uh, all the way around the left tackle so if we go ahead and run this you see this really wild loop that he takes and it's really hard for that left tackle to pick him up 
So now this one's you know a little bit less flexible because it's in this specific play. It's not like we can pick cover six and cover two and cover four quarters and things like that. But you know as a change up, it's pretty good. Uh, you know just like the other one, it doesn't look like the pressure is coming in. You're only sending four, so you're pretty safe right there. Uh, you have some run benefits just like the other one because this guy's aggressively fitting in because he's on a blitz path. So if they run inside zone or something like that, uh, he'll come in. Uh, by the way, side note, yesterday I was running this uh, and this guy actually on his blitz path was able to pick off the quarterback. I don't know how often <laughs> that would ever happen, if that'll even ever happen to any of you, but it's kind of fun. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then you have kind of contain over here. But I'd suggest, obviously, you know, obviously having athletes all the way across the board is always really, really good. Uh, in this case, uh, I would really suggest trying to get speedy guys even at your defensive tackle spots because often your backside tackle, like your three tech over here, uh, will be in a contain and, you know, he needs to be able to chase down the quarterback. So for me, I have speed everywhere. You know, speed is the most important thing other than abilities. And then here... Um, yeah, so the contain also won't be the greatest. You see, in this case, we're actually able to escape. I mean, it's not the fastest guy, but at least it's better than nothing, right? But that's just kind of part of the whole trade-off with all of this stuff, right? It's uh, the trade-off between coverage and pressure uh, and, and contain. In this case, because it's a creeper, we don't have too much of a trade-off between coverage and pressure because we still have seven guys in coverage. Uh, the only trade-off is that we have you know, a, a more of a non-ideal guy in coverage, essentially. Uh, and then here, uh, what's good about this one is that even if they block their running back, that looper will come all the way across and then he'll also, oh, in that case, he engaged with the back, which is actually maybe the first time I've seen that. But in general, if I run this just like this and they block the back, what happens just like the three, three, five wide type of thing is that the back doesn't really engage with them and then he can still come in for the sack. But just like the 335 wide meta kind of looping blitz type of thing, uh, if they have a tight end to that side, uh, and in this case, I think it's whether he's blocking or not, uh, this guy won't be able to come in. But again, if they do that, then we have the other blitz that I showed you before that. So, but if they don't, you know, you see this comes in quite cleanly every single time. Plus, you have the nice six-man coverage behind it, and then obviously, you know, it's pretty much just cover three behind it, except uh, you essentially have this bonus dropper right here, and he can, again, what I was talking about, he can do anything he wants. Uh, and then in this case, because, because it's trips, uh, this turns into a spot drop cover three essentially anyway, so, um, you know, you can do your things like deep halving guys on the outside so that they're a little bit less a little bit more bomb proof. Uh, and then I actually like this a little bit better than regular cover three anyway, because I think the seam flats play a little bit more aggressively underneath. Uh, the three receiver hook does some things. <laughs> and the vert hook I, I really, really like because he gets into this tender area uh, near the numbers that people tend to like to attack with cover three. But let's get back to the pressures. Okay, and the last one, uh, you know, again, it's a little bit different, but it is all under the same kind of idea uh, that we're trying to come across in this video right here. So this is Nickel Blitz 2. So this is a cover, cover 2 shell type of defense right here. And we are going to essentially do the same thing right here. Uh, one annoying thing is this mic comes down into the B gap right here on the snaps. So that can be a little bit of a tell. Um, but what you want to do is just back him up there. I think he just kind of messes up the blitz if he's in there. Again, we're going to take the nickel out of it. Uh, likely you'll want to just pop him back into a vertical hook right here. And in this case, we'll be blitzing the will linebacker on the backside right here. So what I like about this blitz, and again, we'll just go ahead and contain here for good measure. What I like about this, uh, first of all, it's a little bit of a different shell, so we're changing things up a little bit, but it works in both cases. So in the first two blitzes, they worked in opposite cases, so you have to be a little bit wary of what your opponent's running. But in this case, uh, it works against almost everything. And so what we're gonna do, in this case, we'll just show you the five-man version right here. Uh, similar to the first blitz, he comes through the B gap where the three technique is and comes through clean. Now there is a caveat right here. If they have a formation where the number two on the weak side um, or the number two away from the nickel, like in two by two spread essentially or empty, I think those are the only ones. 
Uh, if he's out there, uh, that means that guy's gonna be aligned over there and then you would have to kind of bring him in. And then from there, uh, if you manually bring him in, uh, I don't think your success rate will be as high. Uh, in this case, yeah, things got kind of muddied up a little bit there. So you'll just have to be a little bit wary of uh, those specific couple of sets, but otherwise you'll be good against everything. Uh, again, you know, we're just taking the, the nickel out of it, putting him on, say, a vertical hook. Vertical hook. We are blitzing the will. We are containing. Uh, and then from there, obviously, this is a five man, so not actually a creeper. Uh, but, you know, if you're coming up against like a Michael Vick or something like that, where they're not as good in the passing game, not as big of a threat, uh, more of a escape threat, uh, this will be a good option for you because you're kind of clogging the lanes a little bit and then you're guaranteeing single teams on your contains. Well, not guaranteeing, but for the most part. Uh, and then from here, you know, you can also drop this guy. So, uh, you know, maybe you want to man this guy up, vertical hook this guy, and then you yourself can be on this side if you want. Uh, if I can get these, this play art is always just so buggy. Anyway, so obviously, you know, a big escape path to the left right here, uh, but... Uh, usually good things are going to happen on the other side, whether that guy's going to come through free or like in that case, like I showed you right there, he, he runs into his defensive end right there and he kind of bounces him free and then he takes the block. But in general, you'll be good there. Um, this one, like the first one and unlike the second one, um, the, the back can obviously pick this up. Uh, but, you know, if there's somebody that likes to send out five and you're bringing this on third down or fourth down when they're not expecting it, obviously they're not going to be blocking the back. Uh, so you don't really need to worry about that anyway. Or if it's something that you're running a lot, then, you know, by, just by taking the back out of the play, we're essentially winning. Uh, although, you know, cover two maybe isn't the, the best thing that you can be running. Um, it's still just a nice other change up that's all kind of in this creeper philosophy that you can do in again you know nickel 245 here in the baltimore ravens ebook um or just the playbook <laughs> you don't necessarily need to go see that um and then uh i believe all of these you can do in nickel normal 335 wide or sorry 335 sam 335 will as well okay definitely uh leave a like if you appreciated this video if you're going to be using these in your kind of halloween ultimate team uh, weekend league type of things uh, and then definitely leave some questions if you have some, some of those. Anyway, so that'll be it for this, and we'll see you guys in the next one.